General Motors announced yet another vehicle recall today. It is part of what has become a wave of safety alerts the company has issued in recent weeks. Jeffrey Brown has the story. The latest addition to GM's ever-growing list, 218,000 Chevrolet Aveos recalled just this morning. They have a dashboard lighting module that could overheat and catch fire. A day earlier, the company told customers to bring in nearly two and a half million vehicles for seat belt, gear shifter, and other mechanical problems. It all started in January, with nearly 2.6 million vehicles recalled for ignition switch defects going back a decade and linked to 13 deaths. Do you swear that the testimony you're about GM's to new CEO, Mary Barra, faced senators in April. Sitting here today, I cannot tell you why it took so long for a safety defect to be announced for this program, but I can tell you we will find out. By now, GM has called back nearly 14 million vehicles, the most ever in a single year. The 29 separate actions include last Thursday's recall of 2.7 million Chevrolet, Saturn, and Cadillac models for taillight and other malfunctions. The March 13th recall of 1.7 million Buick, GMC, and Chevrolet vehicles for brake and airbag problems. And the March 31st recall of 1.3 million Chevrolets, Saturns, and Pontiacs for power steering issues. Last Friday, the government fined GM $35 million for concealing the ignition switch problem. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox. What we cannot tolerate, what we will never accept, is a person or a company that knows danger exists and says nothing. Literally, silence can kill. The company's new safety chief, Jeff Boyer, acknowledges the investigation prompted the avalanche of other actions. He told the Associated Press, we're not waiting for warranty trends to develop over time. In the meantime, GM has conducted its own investigation of the ignition switch issue. That's expected to be released in the coming weeks. And we look at the recalls and the impact on GM with Eric Gordon, a professor at the University of Michigan Ross School of Business, and Daniel Hill, president of Irvin Hill Strategy, a public relations firm here in Washington. Eric Gordon, let me start with you. What are we to make of this run of recalls, some of them even very small? What's happening from a business perspective? Well, it's a disaster for General Motors. It's damaging their reputation. It will end up damaging their sales. It'll hurt their stock price. And I think the damages will last a long time. And what do you see them doing in uh, drawing out these recalls at the moment? You know, I, I think they're the game of drawing out the recalls and you know, announcing recalls in a way they hadn't previously done is to try to get everything out and over with uh, and to avoid having more explosions. I think the thing that makes uh, GM look the worst is not that there are problems with cars. You know, cars are big, complex things. They're, they're going to be problems with cars. It's the idea that GM has been covering things up. So the last thing GM wants is to have another, uh, re, uh, another event come up that they haven't disclosed. It just makes them look terrible. Daniel Hill, how do you, how do you see what's going on from a public perspective here? Well, the, the reputational toll is going to be huge. Um, and it's, it, this is going to carry on for years. Toyota is still dealing with litigation from their issues in 2009 and 2010. The scale of this, the uh, impact it's had on the public, the inconvenience, uh, the safety issues, uh, it's going to take GM many, many years to overcome well, that. I was wondering about the Toyota example. I mean, uh, reputation-wise, years later, is that still how Toyota's seen? Is that the potential impact for GM? Well, the difference between the two is that Toyota started with a better reputation to begin with. They were seen as a quality automaker at the time of their crisis. Mm -hmm. GM was on the recovery to that, and its brand and reputation improved dramatically, but people can still remember the old GM where safety and quality were not as good. And so people start defaulting, consumers start defaulting to that old GM when they think about this quote unquote new GM. Eric Gordon, what about the response so far? I mean, I don't know how much you can tell at this point, but the response to um, some changing some of the safety issues that they've talked about at, at the company. You know, I think they've done some things well, and I think they've done some things not so well. 
What they've done well is they've stepped forward and said, we will take responsibility for accident victims. Uh, even though it's not clear that they have that legal responsibility, they've stepped up to the moral responsibility. I think they've done that well. I think what they haven't done so well is they haven't acted like a, a new GM. They refer to themselves as a new GM, but they act more like the old GM. They're not acting transparently. Uh, the CEO is unable or refused to answer questions uh, in, in Congress. Uh, they won't answer questions until their own internal investigation is done. So they got part of it right, and I, I think they're botching up part of it. Well, Daniel Hill, and in fact, of course, inevitably, the new CEO, and she's the first woman to head the company, right. is much of the focus of this. Yeah, and I, I think they actually made a calculated risk um, that is going to backfire, uh, and that was putting her out in front of this crisis very early on. Uh, if I were advising the company, I would have said she should have appointed someone to oversee that part of GM uh, while she works on the future and, and leading the company going forward. Now she's dragged into this crisis so much, it's going to be hard for her to do the other things. So it's a huge distraction on top of you know, the, all the challenges that the situation Well, but a, as the new person, doesn't she have to be out there as leading uh, and, and, and especially responding to the public at a moment like this? I think she, she can do that and also not drag herself into the day-to-day -day morass that crises, um, you know, cause for companies and, um, and give herself just enough distance while still doing the right thing in terms of owning it for the company. Eric Gordon, you started to talk a little bit about this, but put it into the larger perspective of GM over recent years. We've had, we had, of course, the uh, the near the bankruptcy, and we had the government help, and the story certainly we've covered on this program over the last number of years is was a, a largely positive story about uh, GM and the American auto industry until this. You know, it's really sad. It was like GM was a. Uh a Corvette convertible going down the road in a nice clip, sunny day, the wind in your hair, things were looking pretty good, and then all of a sudden the wheels fall off and you're in the ditch. Uh, I think it's going to be hard for GM to get that momentum back uh, because the, the more recent history hasn't been so pleasant. It, the timing couldn't be worse for General Motors. In, in what way? Well, you know, you, you want to build on that momentum. You want to put the bankruptcy behind you. You want to put the image of the old GM behind you. Uh, you want to bring out new cars. You have a new CEO. You really wanted things to, to build up, n not to stall. Um, I mean, literally and figuratively for the company. And, you know, how many new GMs can you take in, in a couple of years? It's going to be hard for them to get that, oh, we're a new company uh, image back, and I think it's going to be hard for them internally to get that uh, kind of momentum going again. What, what do you think of that, Daniel? How many how many new GMs can one take? Can the public take? Right. Well, they could try new GM 2.0, mm -hmm. or what I think they'll try to do is they're going to try to convince the public that the new GM that we're seeing today is actually the old GM, and they're going to try to you know, kind of roll this one under the bus, if you will, and start fresh once they get these recalls out of the way. And the problem with the recall situation they face now is that they want to take this rip the Band-Aid approach uh, where get it all out of the way, but they're ripping the Band-Aid off too slowly. Um, so it's not really as effective as I think, as I think they'd like. And I, I don't think we've seen the end of it yet. Well, and speaking of the end of it, what is next? I mean, there are some lawsuits out there. There's their own uh, internal investigation we talked about, which apparently could come within a few weeks. And one big one is the looming uh, criminal uh, potential, that there would be a big criminal fine from the government the same way that Toyota faced. And then also the potential of a political issue. Do candidates running for office start tying the GM crisis into the health care discussion? This is what you get when government interferes in private sector business. And oh, you I think, think it could play out like that? I do. I, I can see Republicans making an issue of this in the midterm election and saying the administration intervened in this company and this is what you look forward to with your health care going forward. So this could drag on for quite a while. All right. Certainly more to come. Daniel Hill and Eric Gordon, thank you both so much. Thank you.